Alright, so I'm back with another artist tool review. This time I have the Wacom Cintiq Companion that the nice folks over at Wacom sent me a review unit to, to try out. The last time I reviewed the Lenovo ThinkPad Helix with uh, mixed reviews. Uh, this time uh, I think we'll do far better. So the first thing to notice is that they sent this really nice you know, slip case to, to keep everything nice and tidy and cozy. And the detail, the, the attention to detail is just fantastic. First they give you a little slot here to put the pen case in which you have the pen case, the nibs, the nib removal tools, even the little colored rings that Wacom is now including on their pens. Uh, the pen has a really nice feel to it, even nicer than uh, my current Cintiq 12WX. And it just it feels very nice in the hand, not too big. And I really love the little magnetic uh, um, tabs at the end that keep, you know, keep it nice and closed. It's a really nice little touch. So next is, you open the flap, it has a really nice uh, microfiber lining a slot for the Bluetooth keyboard that they provide, sold separately. Uh, but it's a really nice keyboard, nice thin, light, you know, does what it needs to do. Um, next, it's a zippered case, we have the tablet itself. Now, the tablet is 13.3 inches, 1080p display, um, matte finish, which I'll get into soon, but I love. They also provide, it doesn't come attached, but they provide the kickstand for propping up at different angles. On the back there, you can't see it too well because it's covered up, but there's a camera in the back and there's a front facing camera here and the express keys right there. So, um, on the side you have a micro SD expansion slot. Um, it accepts SDXC, I think it's a 64 gigabyte. Uh, two USB 3.0 ports and a dis mini display port out and headphone jack. And here's the power switch. We'll power it up. Okay, so the device boots up very, you know, very quickly, um, as you would expect one of these new devices with SSDs. The model they sent me was the Pro model, so it has, both models have 8 gigabytes of RAM, but this has a 512 gigabyte SSD. It comes with Windows 8.1. So the first thing I have to say that is the screen is very responsive uh, to, to touch and to the pen. I've had no pointer calibration issues. It's just been pretty smooth. Um, running apps was very zippy. You go to the desktop, watch Photoshop. Photoshop launches very quickly and the touch controls are very nice and you can you know Photoshop is very limited in its multi-touch applications but if a basic zoom in and out works very well unfortunately the you know rotation doesn't really work but that's not really Wacom's fault it's Adobe's for putting lackluster support for multi-touch displays
just a real quick little sketch to just kind of display uh, how smooth it runs. And now this is a little, just a weird little issue that I've had. Probably just comes from probably you know my style of uh, having my hand on the screen. But every so often, um, depending how I move my hand, the screen might jump in another direction, and I lose the screen. I have to drag it back really quickly. A little bit of annoyance was probably just because of the way. I have my hand. You can turn up. You can turn off touch very easily, but then you lose the ability to zoom in and out and use other functions related to touch. But um, me, I'd probably would just get an artist glove, put it on, and I'd probably just avoid that issue so I can keep using the multi-touch. You know, a, gl a glove with some cutouts. So it didn't really bother me too much. I had some similar issues on my Surface Pro as well, so wasn't really too much of a surprise for me. Probably happened a little bit more on this because of the fact that it's got a much bigger screen than the Surface Pro. That's just a really rough, dirty little sketch, um, just to show its responsiveness. Um, you can see that pen pressure works very well. There's no skipping. I have my uh, personal brushes loaded, and they they work great. The full Photoshop brushes work great. Um, performance has been very good. You know, there was a few little Photoshop tweaks that I had to make. Um, and I think it's probably best to keep the system, photo. I mean, to keep Windows itself set to performance. Um, but after, you know, those tweaks are made, it runs very well. Let's try some other brushes. And this is a chalk brush. There we go again. This is a chalk brush that, on certain systems, lags just a little bit. I think it lags a little bit on my surface. Not much. It's very still very usable, but uh, here runs quite well. I mean, it lags at larger speeds, which but I get this. I get this on my main computer actually. I try not to use that brush at too uh, large of a size. But um, it works pretty good. So now I want to get to these, uh, to the touch strip. Now my, my first thought was that I was going to miss the touch strips on both sides like I have on my 12WX. And while that was the case, and it is the case a little bit, I like how Wacom integrated um, other features using the touch panel so you can kind of make up for things. So right now I have, with this, they, this was actually came pre-set up on the device and I kind of left it because I actually liked it. So you, you, know, you push this and you get an on-screen display and then with a bunch of shortcuts you can bring up actual size, you can bring up, oops, I hit the Windows key by accident. Just to this. You can hang out to select, you have pixels, you have save. So this has been really great because it makes up for the lack of those physical buttons. I, I would still prefer to have the physical buttons. This is a nice, uh, uh, um, it's a nice workaround. I mean, you could always have the Bluetooth keyboard and keep it nearby and 
use you know shortcuts that way but when you don't have the keyboard or you don't want to fuss with it have it out you know just pull the tablet out and start drawing you know the amount of keys they give you are fine you get you get one two you get the four-way rocker the windows key in the center and then two more on the bottom and I find it's very adequate for what it needs to do there's one thing that I struggled with my surface pro was the lack of some type of shortcut keys and have you know I, I I've tried gaming peripherals with moderate success I bought a cherry device which did not work quite as well as I'd hoped and just having these built into the device is just like having them on my regular Cintiq it's just been fantastic um, on the pen itself something else I missed on my surface was the fact that I have two buttons on here and a proper smooth eraser um, on the Surface Pro there was only one button which was limiting and the the eraser on it was a blocky square which was just to me completely unusable I ended up buying the uh, Wacom Bamboo uh, that's meant for tablets like the Surface Pro but that didn't come with an eraser so I lost the eraser function as well but I never used it on the Surface Pro pen so it wasn't much so having this back also is just it's just like having another quick key um, so I also tried it out on the, the using Mongo Studio Mongo Studio it actually works even better than it does on with Photoshop Some of the water brush color brushes in here I have to push down even harder. But I use Mongo Studio mainly for inking. And its pressure sensitivity works fabulous. I can sketch in the lag. And what's nice is in Mongo Studio, the pinch and zoom works well. And then, oh, actually, no, actually, my mistake. Mongo Studio only has pinch to zoom, no rotate, unfortunately, but it still works pretty well. I usually don't use this too much, um, but Wacom included Sketchbook Pro in installed, and this has worked quite well. Now this, you get pinch to zoom and rotate. It's a little choppy, but nonetheless, it's still nice to just be able to rotate, which unfortunately Adobe can't quite figure out yet. Um, but again, pressure sensitivity works fantastic. I won't bore you with my another one of my rough sketches, but um, with the Sketchbook Pro, it's nice because you also have you know you have all these little things right on screen. But so this has worked pretty well. Now I mentioned earlier that it had a matte screen, which I loved, and thing I loved about this is that on my Surface Pro it was just it was glossy and the pen would just slide and I just wouldn't feel like I got any sense of traction or friction on, on the screen and it just gave a very disjointed drawing experience. I was able to offset it a little bit by using um, a felt nib which helped a little bit. Um, a friend of mine tried a screen protector but to me it just I didn't f like the, the feel of it it just felt gummy and like I was drawing on a uh, rubber sheet which basically is what you're doing and it would leave little marks on the screen and I wasn't too fond of it 
having the screen like on the other Cintiqs is is it's terrific. It just it just feels like I can draw fluidly without feeling that disjointed feeling I was getting with the surface. And the the main other plus that I liked is just the screen size. It having thirteen point three inches versus the ten point six of the surface made a world of difference to me. I've got big ish hands and the little screen just I, I found it having a hard time to work on. I love the device but as time went on I felt like I didn't want to bother doing any work on it just because I having to deal with the screen and the small so, the small font sizes. Now font sizes are still small on the screen it's also it's the 1080p display just like the surface um, but it's not as bad and there's no scaling going on, so you get less issues. Um, the other thing I liked was the... I'll take it off here. Was the stand that they provide. It has three notches for three different levels of height. And this... It feels flimsy at first. When you first take it out, the way it attaches, I was a little concerned that it might fall back, that it would be a little strange, you know, and restrictive in angles. When I attached it in one direction at first, it was way too high. And then I realized that I could flip it the other way, and it slots into tabs. back here and then just attaches to the back of the device which is nice just keeps it out of the way it's flat it's flush it doesn't really add much weight or, or thickness but you pull it out you pick the tab you slot it in and then once it's in you know at first it feels flimsy and and it won't hold up and it's been great I've I've put you know my weight on I, I tend to put the weight of my hand when I was drawing no problems and the angle has been great um, actually enjoyed that much better I had some issues with my Cintiq W 12 WX that after a while the joint on the hinge of the stand got loose so if I would start to draw it would fall back into its lowest position I would have to put something there to catch it and and I got I learned to just draw at its lowest height but this is great it's not going anywhere and I was using a separate stand for the Surface Pro I was using a separate stand for the Surface Pro just to get it at the height that I wanted. The included stand would just be way too high, personally, so. Here's the Surface Pro. And as you can see, this is way too straight up high for drawing. So I bought a separate stand that was meant for uh, an iPad that had multiple angles. And while that worked great, it was something I had to assemble every time. It was two pieces. It's a, it was decent thickness. It was made of metal. So it was just another piece I had to carry around that was separate, that I had to bag up separately. With this, I've been able to just keep that on there. And it's worked fantastic. I'm going to check out here. Here's the Wacom Desktop Center that comes pre-installed so it's just the area where you can just program all your your buttons you could turn touch on and off you can have all your express key settings you can update the driver uh, um, and just you know up, uh, uh, change orientation for left or right-handed um, just something I kind of missed having on the surface the surface is a uh, Wacom driver uh, um, preference panel was very limited in here you have all those tools that you're probably used to from a uh, um, Wacom driver another little issue I had 
and I'm not sure if it's something that I'm not finding properly or I'm not haven't noticed. Um, I looked around for a little bit, but I didn't notice um, was that the fact that you can't reprogram the Windows key to be anything else but that. I would have liked to have an extra button to program in Photoshop. I think you know if I would be be able to just set it just for Photoshop or Manga Studio or any of those programs to function as something else, and then as soon as I leave the program, it could still function as the Windows key. Um, I just feel it's a it's a waste of a button. I don't typically need to use the Windows button except to just go straight to the start menu from Photoshop and to me it's not a very big deal. I can always just hover down to the taskbar and do it that way um, or just exit out of Photoshop completely and then just be on the desktop and then use the Windows key as as it's supposed to be used. So I think that's a little bit of a misstep, but it may be something I'm missing. I just don't see an option to change it. Um, just a, a minor little problem. So as far as my negatives on this device, um, there are a few, but not many. Um, my first more minor beef is that the power button kind of sticks out a little bit. It's on the lower portion so you can tend to push it by accident when you're picking it up holding it um, and sometimes it'll get pressed in the bag and I, I've, I've found it in the pouch running and I'll pull it out and I'll, I realize it was, it's been running for a little while drained battery um, personally I when I get one I'm probably going to get a little bit of a shoe grew moldable silicone and kind of create a little like cover for it so it doesn't get pressed um, but that is a little bit of an issue that I have with it but not a major issue uh, while on the subject of battery the battery life on it isn't fantastic it's adequate but to me it didn't seem to be that much of a problem most of the time when I was somewhere I was near a plug and I plugged in so, so for the times where I probably wouldn't be near your plug, I would be okay. Um, I would have, you know, a few hours to go on it. I would hope that Wacom would release some sort of maybe thin battery pack or, or just something small, you know, some or something that, you know, it wouldn't be too much extra weight to carry. Um but still provide that extra bit of power. The power plug is a proprietary plug, it's not a USB or anything, so you wouldn't be able to use, you know, like your standard battery pack for your for an iPad or something of that nature. Um so hopefully they'll come out with something for that, which which would be very nice. Now getting on to the issue of weight, we actually had the fact that this puppy is a little, this item's a little heavy compared to the Surface Pro. To me, it wasn't as big of a deal. It was definitely heavier, but for me, it's far, it's far more worth it to have the weight and just have everything that I need, the bigger screen size, the, you know, the power. It didn't bother me at all. I've carried heavier device. The the Helix, for example, was much heavier um, with the keyboard and battery pack that it came with. So I had no problems with the weight. It might be a concern for some. I have a friend who thought it was a little heavy for her, but for me, I've had no problems with it. My next bit of comparison is uh, using a piece that I'm familiar with, a piece that I worked on a little while ago. I used the same piece I worked on to compare the Surface Pro to the Helix, so I'm going to use it again. Um, so the color on the Cintiq Companion is good, but is definitely more orange than what I see on the Surface Pro, so it's a, it's, it's a little off. It's not off as by much. It's not off as much as the Helix was, but it's still more orange cast and I'm hoping that that calibration will just fix that issue. 
the um, colors aren't too bad, but it's definitely something to note that if it can't be calibrated out, it won't be as accurate, but the colors are definitely better than, actually they're actually better than my Cintiq 12WX. So the, I also use this file to test because it has a lot of layers and you know just working with it seemed to run still run smoothly had no problems and it ran great in conclusion the, the, the device is very expensive it is uh, for this model the 512 gigabyte SSD is 2500 the 256 gigabyte model is 2000 so it is very expensive, but for what you get, the attention to detail, the just classic Wacom, you know, device where everything just feels like it works smoothly, it, it, it just can't be beat with anything that's out there right now. Um, in fact, I plan to sell my Surface Pro so I can pick up one of these because I'm no longer going to need that device. Despite the fact that the Cintiq Companion is an expensive purchase, with all that's featured, I feel it's a premium device that definitely makes you feel it was money well spent. Even with the few issues I had for the artists on the go, I would definitely recommend this product. My score, an A-.